Bronson, like uh, like Charles. This old, old folks get that the, the the kids don't they don't know what I'm talking about, and they're not impressed when I say it's like my second cousin or something like that. Uh, I'm just glad to be here, and and it's an honor. Um, also, like I was, uh, what a what a great the preamble is just really just nails it. I've only heard it three times, but I my ears perk up. And the administrators um, of this group were kind enough to send me an email to, with some bullet points, and, and I'm grateful for that. Um, although I, I, I do have a lot of public speaking, it's generally in, in more safe places. Uh, that didn't really sound right, but um, not getting recorded, that, that, that's for sure. Um, so here I am. It's a little bit more vulnerable than uh, than what I'm used to, and um, and you know we're touching on a, on a topic that I haven't really shared. Uh, I haven't shared it with strangers. That's for damn sure. And it's 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 just you know it's just a story of a cook uh, and shame and uh, and alcohol and my, and my alcoholism isn't really the. The main talking point. It was certainly a. Uh, it certainly made things harder, but um. <laughs> you know, I expect some friends of mine um, to see this video. And uh, and that's a past that I've tried to run away from, and I think one of them just popped on now. Anyhow, uh, so. I I run a restaurant. Um, at, at a hippie hot springs in the on the edge of the Tahoe National Forest. Uh, most people don't know where where the hell we're at. Um, ironically, uh, one of the attendees here actually actually knows where I live. She used to work in a kind of a larger town nearby, probably many moons ago. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a chef by trade, but this place is so small. I, I I try to make other decisions. <laughs> like uh, right now, one of the, one of the questions that I was given, besides just announcing myself, was, um, let's see here, what's you know what's been the biggest hurdle lately sustaining my mental health in this industry? And uh, the answer to that is currently I don't have a job. Um, the whole world has been obviously affected by a novel virus, meaning we don't have uh, immunity to, we don't, you know, we don't have anything to fight it off because it's just never existed before. So obviously uh, the world is so interconnected, it, it's affecting the entire world and, and it's um, preaching to the choir and like be Captain Obvious here, it's obviously affected our industry. Um, so yeah, uh, now historically the challenge has been um, for the last seven and a half years, uh, I haven't had a drink and have and participate in my recovery to, to stay abstinent from alcohol. Um, my, so historically before I got sober, my challenges with the industry have been um, mostly of my making, but after I got sober, my challenges were, uh, they changed because my values have changed and my perspective and ethos have, have shifted. So trying to get my personal uh, goals to match up with my professional goals has been slightly challenging. Uh, the next thing I was asked to touch base on was, uh, was my rock bottom. And uh, you know what mental health issue um, that I battle. So that's primarily alcoholism, and but not to say that uh, um, you know if you don't understand alcoholism, it, it the thing is it, it's not liquor's fault. What what I learned that it's um, that it's it's me. Um, and what yeah so 
I wrote down like all my relationships were painted or stained by alcoholism. Um, when I got sober, I was 34 years old. I am no longer 34. Um, how did I know it was a problem? Well, I, I, had, I think it had finally dawned on me that, that the way I was going, it was gonna kill me. Um, and not necessarily because I wanted to take my own life, although I, I had gotten pretty, pretty low, but the way I drank was mostly in a blackout. So the trajectory I was on was, um, you know, jails and hospitals and, uh, and, and if you're in a blackout, you really don't have any control of any of your faculties. So chances are I was going to probably, probably mute Mr. Uh, Mr. Drew Williams. But uh, yeah, so so alcohol was it was going to kill me, and, and and I thought that was probably going to come pretty soon. Plus, I was just um, I you know I had had I, I've had really happy moments, um, pl plenty of them. Um, so I knew life was capable of of, of delivering um happy moments and, and, and I was miserable and I was fairly positive that it, it, it shouldn't be like this and, and something had to change and, and I desperately wanted something to change. So I, um, well, in another way I knew that it was a problem is uh, in one way or another, um, people told me whether or not they had the courage to verbally tell me or from my life altogether. Um, yeah, so rock bottom that, you know, I, I personally struggle with alcoholism. Um, how would I describe a particular antidote? So the story that I kind of wanted to share with you guys is something that I've, I, I, I don't tell very many people. It was, it was actually kind of funny when, um, I, you know, I wasn't the original speaker. Uh, I, I kind of came in because, um, you know, someone had canceled. So um, they're like, oh, you, you got to, you know, send in a headshot and a, and a quick little bio. And so I'm like copying, paste, copy and pasted from some other goofy ass thing I had. The, the funny part about that for me is that I've been very, very, very careful with my words on how I, how I write a bio or how I fill out a, a resume to a potential employer. So I get to say really cool and groovy things like uh, I, was on, I was on the Olympic team in the year 2000. Uh, we were, I was on a team that represented the United States in the junior category for the first time ever. And that team took silver. Well, the truth is I didn't go to Germany. Um, I was on that team and, uh, here's, here's what happened. I was on that team for a really long time and we won state and we won regional and we won nationals and they made me cut my hair and we were, uh, we were put together to, to, to go to the Olympics. There was an age requirement and when I first um, tried out for that culinary team, well, first off, I didn't know you could letter and, and cooking. Uh, I didn't know teams got together. Uh, I was green as green could be. I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know anything about anything. I just. I knew I wanted to be a chef, and maybe the Food Network had something to do with that. Maybe it was this girlfriend I had in high school. A friend of the family was a professor at some culinary school and he wound up being my coach and and I got placed in a really well I owe a lot to the kitchen and the chef I worked with and, and more importantly of the friends that I made there and we all wanted to be chefs and, and it was because I like I had that desire to to be a part of that team and, and I got placed in underneath the chef because the culinary school, the ACF, right? They do like apprenticeships and so on and so forth. And well, I really wanted to fit in. 
and I didn't, I didn't drink at all. I, I, I couldn't handle my liquor. Like, you know, my girlfriend would have to hold my ponytail while I puked after like three beers. And I was, I was just kind of a, a kid on a skateboard that couldn't really button, you know, I'd miss a hole in my shirt during an interview and, and I just wound up in the kitchen and there was a lot of us like that. And so I was just kind of the stoner kid and well, everybody got together like every night to party. And, and, I, and, I, and I said, well, I just felt so glad I was invited first off and I don't really drink and this guy you know, a front of the house manager, like old, old dude, right? He was probably in his thirties. He was in a suit and he, he looked at me and he said, that'll change. And sure as shit, he was right. Now, I don't know if everyone I drank with back then was an alcoholic. Um, it's not my place to say, but I know my nights started to end a lot differently than theirs. And then I like, and then my high school sweetheart, we were like one of those couples in high school that everyone's like most likely to get hitched or whatever and uh you know and, and she finally got sick of my shit because I was changing and not really for the better and we broke up and, and then I started drinking uh to change the way I felt and looking back I think that might have been like a an invisible line that I crossed but here, here we are being curated for to represent the United States of America in the goddamn Olympics. And I'm circling the drain. And my friends know it. Coach knows it. The administrator of the school knows it. And hell, I know it. And, uh, and there are other people that, that wanted my spot and deserved it. Um, that were putting in more work than I was capable of. And just like any good breakup, you know, they called me into the office and they wanted me to get my shit together, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't stop being the way I was. And uh, so I, you know, I broke up with them before they could break up with me. And uh, yeah, so I quit the team and my friend just popped in here and, I, and I, I rem we worked together and I remember he looked at me and he's like, God damn it, Adam. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, you don't quit an opportunity like this. And I, I, I had no words of, ex I, I, didn't, I couldn't explain it to him. I couldn't have come up with any words to explain to him. Like, I can't stop being like this and there's nothing I can do about it. And it went on like that, you know, um, eventually I couldn't finish school because I couldn't show up to class or, or I said I didn't want to or, or maybe I learned more at work than I did at school and, and the truth is I could barely show up on time and and, and it kind of looked like I had a good work, work ethic but I just put my head down and worked for as long as they told me to work so no one would notice how goddamn hungover I was and then eventually like if people in my little circle you know of chef you know, drinking chef buddies. I, could, I couldn't pass the classes. I wasn't going to get my degree. And by this time, everybody had me figured out. They're like, oh, if, if you said Adam's name, you might say like, yeah, he's a pretty good chef. But, and I didn't like how the blanks were filled in. You know, the guy's a partier, he's a drinker. And so I left. <laughs> I drove 2000 miles west and left. And I figured I'd just start over somewhere else. And, and I did, I just didn't really open up the chapter that I, you know, like a shiny new quarter. Like uh, I, I brought all my problems with me plus my knife kit and a couple changes of underwear. And I remember my new employer called up my old chef. So here I am in Lake Tahoe my new employer calls my old chef in fucking Kansas, Kansas City and goes, why the hell did you send me an alcoholic? And then job after job after job and I'm, and I'm trying to work, just keep my head down and stay ahead of my, and stay ahead of my actions that I have no control over. So the truth is, I've, I don't keep in touch with my old friends back home as much as I should. And, 
I, I know I cause a lot of damage in those relationships and if those guys and, and, and those gals that were on the Olympic team with me ever watched this video, you know, I'm uh, sorry for all that. And uh, maybe we can reconnect and then somehow I can uh, make things right. But yeah, that's my, uh, that's my Olympic story. And so here I am out in Reno and I get, I get decent jobs and I, I do well enough. I, I cook good food and that's about the only thing that's worth looking at. And so that's the only thing I want you to see because it's the only thing I'm proud of. Because if you knew anything else about me, you wouldn't like me. And I met <laughs> some gal that, you know, she kind of filled out a chef coat and, uh, and, and we made a baby and, and all of a sudden now I was tasked with looking at myself of being more than just a chef as my, as my, you know, that's how I saw myself. That's how I wanted you to see me. That was my identity. But now, now I'm a father and, uh, I, and I, I knew I was not the father I was supposed to be, not the father that this kid needed. And I had a panic attack, you know, um, I knew I needed to get, I needed to get right. He was eight when I got sober. Now he's 15 and a half now, but, uh, so to, to try to finish this thing as, as prescribed, that was, that was an antidote that, uh, the next question I'm faced with is, uh, what action did, did I take to change? Um, well, I was fairly sure that I had a drinking problem. <laughs> and back then the internet wasn't really prolific so I could look up the phone book and, and sure as shit, right there in the beginning under the A's uh, was an acronym for a 12 step group that uh, I didn't really know too much about, but I think I, think I, I might've found some solutions there. And with some trial and error, I, uh, well, that's what happened. I, I investigated, learned, learned what they had to say and, and kind of uh, did what they said that I should do that was gonna help my particular malady. And, and to be fair, like, you know, these groups are prolific, 12-step uh, groups in general, especially in cities, um, which was kind of a geographic antidote. When I told my friends I was moving from Missouri to, to Reno, Man, they looked at me like, are you serious, Adam? Like, you're gonna move to a town that drinks 24 hours a day and you think things are gonna work out? Oh, sure. So, um, uh oh, I lost my place. What action did I take to change? What are some tools you have found? Um, well, you know, the neat part is that um, there's a lot of groups that are willing to help out with a lot of different subjects. Um, there's acronyms all over the place. It's not just, you know, booze and drugs. It's there's codependency and, and issues around work and gambling and ad infinitum. Um, but I think the point I want to make is that, that like, whatever it is, I, I encourage folks to seek out and investigate. Um, the tools that are that are gained is just for me. It's just a new way to live um, that I continue to discover and hone in community, uh, meaning not just myself with my weird ass thoughts, thinking that I'm going to figure out what's wrong with me and be able to fix it, since I am primarily the maker of most of my problems. So I, you know, I was just like this group. I mean. Um, just like this, getting vulnerable, getting real, um, talking outside. You know, if we spend an hour in here making relationships, keeping in touch with old friends, making new friends, and, and getting real about what's going on in, in each other's lives, I think those are the, the tools. Um, let's see. How. How do you stay resilient in order to carry on living out uh, passions? 
I might have skipped one over, but anyhow, the, the best example of resiliency I've been able to interpret, I actually got from my fiance. She was describing one moment in particular, and she kind of coined a phrase, at least in my mind, and she referred to this, this, uh, this moment as accumulated reverence. And uh, she's a pretty cerebral type of gal, but whether she knows it or not, it made a spiritual impact with me. Um, I don't know where people get resiliency from. I know personally, I don't manifest it from myself by myself. Uh, Very different person I, now than what I know. I get resiliency from um, very from good. listening to you guys and hearing what you are going through and, and feeling connected. Um, and how do I follow my passions? Well, I mean, pr most of my life I was running from myself and I only had one thing that I was proud of and that was being a chef. So these days uh, I, get to, I get to be more than just one thing. I am a father, a husband, a son. I try to be <laughs> good at those things. Uh, and then I get to play, I, I play drums, trumpet, hockey, uh, sail, get to sail on some boats here and there. Um, and there's another question referring to like, what, what, uh, how, do, how, do, how do I battle pressures that come up? Um, so outside of the scope of my group, meaning outside of my struggle with alcohol, um, I thought, there's been times where I sought other sources of, of help, sometimes professional, and I got good at saying, uh, I don't know, and then asking for help. And, and when, I, when I'm <laughs> acting like a mature adult, and that's kind of, I, I like to use those words, but in my heart, when I'm really spiritual, thus being mature, um, like a like a like a spiritual gangster, I, uh, I I I get to call on my greatest asset, which I've learned is being wrong and uh, getting to correct that, and um, being aware of uh, how other people's how other people feel, and getting to right where I've caused wrong, whether I think it's real or imagined, or whether I intended to do it or not. If I hurt someone else. Um, so if there's, if there's like one thread, if there's one thread in this thing that I'd want to share with the group, um, and it's hard for this stuff not to sound cliche or trite, you know, and especially concerning our craft, uh, I, I, I still don't know what else I would do if I wasn't a chef. Um, I do think it is an honorable craft and I, and I do think there is some real heritage and lineage to passing this thing on. Um, and and there's, I think there's a real responsibility in that too. I also think there's some accountability too that I'd like to be a voice and I'd like to be a, one of many to help change this industry, obviously for the better um, where humans are kind of tucked in there on the bottom line of that spreadsheet uh, where we, we are generally concerned about our peers um, and, um, and can reach out and, and notice when, when, they're, when they need help and, and maybe and know how to help. And that, that's a lot of top-down stuff too. Um, and, you know, and, I, and I speak to restaurant owners and there, there's a culture that, we, uh, that has wound up, it's made a lot of us. And, and some of that's been good and some of that's bad, but I think the important part that I like, I circled and I capitalized is we, like we do this. I, I, I don't pretend to go down and, and, and run a restaurant by myself. I never have and I never will. I'll never run a kitchen by myself. And these things don't come to fruition out of one person's effort. So the same very reason that we're all here uh, is, well, first off, it's just amazing how we've been able to pivot and we can all sit here and talk 
um, and listen on, on this platform is just as great. Um, so I think I think we're we're stronger than um, anyhow. That's that's certainly enough out of me. I think. Thanks, Adam. Thank you, Adam.